Hi there! Here is my second part of comparison between racing simulators and real-life racing. If you just stumbled upon this video, I would suggest to watch first one as well. But today we will discuss some technical details of how simulators render racing reality and how our brain processes this information. What are pros and cons on both sides and how useful simulator can be for real-life driver. First of all, I would like to start with points where sim racing achieved best results. And the first one will be the most arguable topic at the same time. It is physics. Well, racing sims went long way over the last several decades and thus made pretty remarkable progress in this area. Once again, I'm speaking mostly about iRacing, but these ideas can be more or less applied to some other top sims as well. So, nowadays, due to high computer processing power and deep understanding of car physics by developers, we can experience very detailed simulation of what is happening with the car. Mass transfer of cores, suspension kinematics, aerodynamics, damage, everything is being simulated real-time. As an example of details, even internal structure of car tire, carcass warm-up, compound behavior, etc. everything is simulated. Cars are laser scanned, most of cars' systems are modeled, simulated and functional. Tracks are laser scanned as well. It's very complicated and time-consuming process. But it gives sometimes amazingly realistic results. You can find in simulator very subtle details that you noticed on same real track before and vice versa. Small bumps, different asphalt patches, markers around the track. I intentionally don't want to go too much into details how it is done because I'm more interested to look at this from driver's perspective than how it is implemented. But I will leave some links in description below, so you can dive deeper. For now, just believe me that car physics is being rendered from very good to indistinguishably realistic. You can feel it by car behavior, how it reacts to track, your actions, etc. And I know what I'm speaking about, because I spent a lot of time both in sim and real car and this position is supported by many real drivers as well. But not all of them though. That's why I call this topic arguable. If you ask many, let's say, old school but experienced drivers who sat in real race car long before simulator, they might tell you that sim racing is useless, that they don't feel the car, it's undrivable, unrealistic, etc. etc. Why is that? Why do we have so contrary beliefs among real life racers? It's very interesting actually, because of our world perception. Let's go a bit deeper into this and try to understand how our brain receives information of what our car is doing, what physical, let's say, channels are used. First of all, it's vision. Most of the information we gain come through our eyes. And it's the same for real life and simulator. If we sim race with monitor like here, we can't use our binocular vision to perceive distances. But actually our brain can adapt to this pretty easy. And it's not a problem at all if we use virtual reality set. There are other issues with them, but still I'm trying to say here that vision works mostly similar in both worlds. But vision has one big downside. It takes a lot of brain processing power. I mean from eyes, signal comes to brain, then our brain has to create a picture, distinguish there some shapes and objects, understand what is happening actually, make decisions and only then give orders to cerebellum and thus body what to do. It takes a lot of time. Some studies show that uh, conscious visual reaction can take about 200 milliseconds. It is too much for racing. At speed of 200 km per hour, we travel more than 10 meters within this time. Can you imagine? So if our car starts to drift, we have to react, and much quicker than this. Uh, the answer here is that yes, vision is very important in decision making, but we don't rely on it mostly when reacting. Basically, it works the same way as when we all stay upright or walk or control our body unconsciously. For these tasks we have vestibular system. By the motion of liquid in this circle of canals, our brain can detect motion in different planes. It is very very quick and efficient way, because it goes straight to cerebellum and then to body without conscious thinking. And good news is that when we can teach it to react to car movements as well. That's what we basically do when we all learn how to drive car, how to counter, steer, etc. And again, these reactions, they are very, very quick. The only problem in our case, that in simulator we sit still, so we can't use all this. Yes, I'm aware of motion platforms, but actually they don't help a lot in this regard. 
because they have some noticeable time lag by design. So they are good for, let's say, entertainment, but not for car control, at least now. That's why experienced real drivers sometimes struggle with sims, because their brain is trained to use vestibular system a lot. And sim developers, they are aware of this situation, so they try to implement other methods to compensate this. And the next one is hearing. Actually, I can tell you that in a real race car, you don't hear a lot. Mostly engine screaming really loud, some car body creaks, basically that's it. Most drivers use special earplugs to dampen sound in car. I mean, it's not very useful in terms of driving in real car. But in a sim, it's completely different. Developers try to bring much more sound from tires depending where you on tire slip curve. There are creaking, squeaking, scratching, wide range of information that you don't have in real car. And it basically works if you practice to listen, because sound is second quickest after motion by reaction speed and still much quicker than vision. For example, you know why horror movies mostly rely on sudden noises? Because you re react on them unconsciously faster than you understand that it's just a movie. If you turn off TV sound, it will be much less scary. But back to our stuff. Sound in simulator definitely works to compensate sense of motion. But vestibular system gives us six channels of information, two sets of three canals. While hearing does only two, we have only two ears. So it's not as good as motion, but better than nothing. One more helpful thing in perception is body feedback. In car, it is mostly feedback from your steering wheel. In simulators, it is called force feedback. Steering wheel becomes lighter or heavier depending on how suspension works, how car weight transfers, where tires are on slip angle curve, etc. So usually you can understand by steering wheel if car is actually under or over steering, if you go over curbs, some rough surface, stuff like this. But situation with steering wheel feedback is similar to hearing. It is actually not very informative in real car, surprisingly, comparing to sims at least. Yeah, you feel basic feedback, but it's way less detailed and informative than in simulators. Through steering wheel, simulators try to give us a bit more information. That's one more way to compensate lack of motion information. That's why people who drive simulators before or instead of real race cars are usually very quick in sims, because they are not used to motion sense and don't rely on it. But fortunately, our brain is a very flexible device. It can learn and adapt its reactions to very different sources of information. But if we speak not only about world perception, there are other things simulators have very in common with real-life racing. For example, racecraft. It is basically the same here and there. Racecraft is how you fight with your rivals, how you defend your position, how you overtake, how you choose your place among other cars, basically. These skills are totally interchangeable between sims and real, because we have real people fighting here and there, and they behave in very similar ways. And almost the same happens with race strategy. For example, not so long ago I did 24 hours virtual endurance race with a team, and we had to work a lot on this aspect. Things like driver changes, refuels, tire wear, pit stops, stuff like this. And all this experience can be applied, to a certain degree of course, but pretty close, to real racing as well. It's very helpful. The next one is psychology. It plays big role in racing because of high pressure in combination with lots of adrenaline. Racing as an activity requires enormous concentration for long periods of time. It's very difficult to stay completely focused even in short races, but in longer ones people start doing more and more mistakes. And unfortunately, mistakes in racing means not just losing positions sometimes. You need special racing mindset to make it work. But these conditions of being in this mindset for longer time can actually be practiced. And simulators can play here a huge role. Not least because sim racing sitting time is much cheaper, as we discussed before. So you can work on extending your focused mindset much easier. Besides that, most top simulators nowadays have detailed telemetry data, very comparable to real life. And learning telemetry and making decisions based on it, it is necessary skill for any driver to master today. And it is also very similar in both worlds, and you can practice it in virtual one, but cheaper again. You can spend months of data research for the price of one real race day. It might look that simulators are basically the same as real racing, or even better sometimes. But there are some downsides as well. Let's have a look at what is implemented not so good. 
weather conditions. I think the ability to use environment to your advantage is one of the things that distinguish great drivers from just good ones. In circuit racing, it is mostly all about different kinds of wet track. In real car, it is completely different world. Just imagine, no visibility, no grip, wet lines, conditions are changing constantly. Finding working wet line is a whole different story in itself, where you can win or lose whole race. Yes, there is progress in this aspect in simulators, at least visual, uh, and temperatures and dirt on track, I think, are more or less done. But for now, I haven't seen good weather implementation that can play a significant standalone role. But this will be solved with the time, I hope. Now let's speak a bit about car's representation accuracy. While in general cars are done very good in sims, I mean general car physics, but if you start comparing them with the same real-life car, you'll find lots of differences and small nuances here and there. Uh, this mainly happens because sim car is like snapshot of reality frozen in time, let's say, while real cars are being constantly changed and developed even in one make series. Uh, this is also the reason why it is so difficult to test setups in simulators for real life. Yes, main concepts are similar, but exact implementation is pretty much different. It is not a problem if you do simulators only, but I understand why developers can't update that many cars very often, but as a result racing cars are always outdated to a certain degree. And some car systems are simulated not very realistic, for example gearbox and clutch pedal. In real car uh, you feel bite point under your feet and how gears engage under your hand. There are certain efforts to replicate this, but not very successful. It's not a deal breaker, honestly, because gearbox feedback is not very important, I would say, but still worth mentioning. Basically, same thing happens with tracks. Yes, they are laser scanned. Yes, this technology is really good. But first of all, it's not perfect as everything. Sometimes I see features that I don't find in real life. As an example, main straight at Snatterton circuit. In sim, we have huge bump on the right side of the track. But there is nothing like this in real life. And uh, it's not the only one. Ok, ok, I can suppose it was repaved after it was scanned, but it is actually the same problem as with cars. Tracks are being updated in simulators very, very rarely, because it is a difficult and very expensive process. In real life pavement is being done from time to time, curbs are being changed pretty often, braking markers are being modified basically all the time because drivers just love to destroy them. Even track limits and the way they are detected are far different. For example, in iRacing you are penalized for track limits violation when center of the car crosses some imaginary line outside of the curb, and this line is not very consistent between tracks, by the way. While in real life, for example, according to UK rules, Track limit is violated when any wheel comes over outside of the curb. The difference is at least half width of the car, sometimes even more. It can make very significant difference in how you practice laps, in lines you choose in lap times. Again, it's not a problem in abstract virtual world, but as a tool for real driver, this can cause some problems. So what can we say looking at all this? started to develop as pretty simple games, simulators reached level where they become separate different sphere of life. There are a lot of things in common with real motorsport and some are still different and some never be identical. But you know, I'm happy, thrilled and excited that I live in an era where simulators are really being developed, making huge steps that racing world expanded from very narrow pretty elite sport to more and more widespread hobby and sport too. So if you ever thought about it, give it a try. It might become passion of your life one day, as it is mine. See you next time.